Uh, hello, here is um, sort of a little explanation of uh, how I've gone about doing um, a ramp to an underground area. Uh, this image I have right here, I've just pasted it in so you can see it quicker. Um, this is from the city of Calgary uh, for a commercial ramp. Uh, you can only go down at a 4% maximum slope for 4.5 meters. For the next 4.5 meters, you can do 15%, so it can get a bit steeper. Uh, then you can get a little bit steeper, and then you have to go back to the less steep amount. And then it says, see this trench detail? <clears throat> so off of the 10% ramp, we need to come down to where there's a drain. And so if this line here is your wall, exterior wall. Any snow and stuff needs to go out, not in. So 2% that way for 600 millimeters. What that means in Revit is it'll look like this. So this is a building pad. That one, that one, they're all separate building pads and one separate one down at the bottom. Uh, in here I put the drain, but I don't have it in the right spot at the moment. We'll fix that in a sec. Um, just in case you wanted to do a little bit more to your uh, parking lot. There's different ways to drain a parking lot. It can go out through a little um, cut and a curb out into a storm retention pond. This one I'm showing going to a drain in the parking lot. And this is just a family I loaded um, and then placed it at a specific height. So over here you can see the elevation of it was minus three, almost minus 350 from level one. Um, this parking lot is a floor so that I can work with these uh, modifying sub elements. Um, you can also slope building pads as well but they don't have the modifying sub-elements. So here we are, I started out on the street and this street is a pad, I called it road. And just for this example, I set it 300 below my level one. If I go to a section, level one is right there. So I've got my grade a little bit lower. I don't know why, but anyway. Um, so there's the road. From the road, um, the city sidewalk is usually a bit higher. And so I needed to put a sloped flared ramp from the city sidewalk to the road. And if I look at that in my section, it looks like this. So here's the road. There's the city sidewalk. That was a building pad as well. You can make it a floor. Either way, at this particular time, I just used a pad. This is um, a pad uh, that I put a slope arrow on it. Go to the site plan, edit the boundary. The slope arrow I applied from midpoint to midpoint um, went from minus 200, which was the height of my sidewalk, over down to minus 300, which was the uh, um, height of my road. So a difference of 100. You just figure out your differences and, and set yours. Okay, in plan, there's my sidewalk. It was my, at minus 200, so that's why those two sloped. And then I started my parking lot. Um, for this far parking lot, I used a floor. And I just set it 50 millimeters below my level one marker at the moment, but then I used the modifying sub elements so that I could slope it to the drain. So I'll go to 3D, click on my parking lot and modify sub elements. And out here at the road, I needed to make it match the sidewalk which was minus 200. So this little element is at minus 150 because up here the whole road was at 50. So that equaled minus 200. 
So that was those two points there. Um, I had it stay flat along this sort of entrance to my parking lot. And then this one is at minus 200. Um, and so these corners are all at minus 200 on this parking lot. Oh, a little bit lower over here. Uh, the whole point there is I added another point or two into the middle to create this dip where I want all the water to drain through this um, site drain. I happen to add three points, four points here, um, and this one is at minus 305, that one's at minus 300. So just something enough to get it to slope from the outside corners down to the drain. It's going to automatically add these triangulation lines depending on how many points you have. Uh, you don't have to see those triangulation lines if you don't want to. Um, so in here, for example, in the plan view, I don't want to see all those strange lines. Um, and if I go to my hidden elements, you can see I have hidden them but they don't show up in a plan view because you don't want all that stuff in the plan view. <clears throat> Excuse me, so here is my drain. And now the car would drive through the parking lot and now it, it needs to go down this ramp. Um, so the first pad, same height as the um, parking lot, was at minus 50 to start, and then I added a slope arrow. And so it started at minus 300 sorry um, it started at minus 300 and it sloped down to minus 480 and so what I had to do there in section I'll show you the picture again um, that oh geez that's blurry that was 4.5 meters was the size of the pad and then I calculated a 4% slope in the 4.5. On the next one, the minimum was 4.5, not the maximum. So what you need to know is the height you're starting at and the height you're trying to get to. The next, the slope at the bottom, minimum 4.5. So you, it can be longer and this one can be longer. And then this one in the middle, 20%. So, um, what that ends up looking like is depending on how deep you've put your parquet, because not everybody's is going to be at the same height as mine. Mine happens to be three meters down. All right, so um, the next pad I did, another 4.5. And I added a slope arrow, and it went from whatever that one left off at. So 480 uh, down to 1155. The length was 45, 4.5 meters. The next ramp had another slope arrow, and um, the length of this ramp was 6785, just because I needed to get from this parking lot to there. Remember, the, they give you the minimum on that length, but you can have longer. And so that one at the slope percentage that I want, um, I set the arrows. Same with, with um, the last one, it flattens out a little bit and goes back to, um, oops, goes back to a different slope percentage and uh, the length of this one is 4,500 again, um, level one and level, I mean, tail and head of that slope arrow. And then this little skinny piece at the bottom, if I edit the boundary, the arrow is going the other direction, and that's so that it slopes down there. Now this is confusing, let me just go back in here show you the there this 
drain was moved on me. It was supposed to be right there. So, um, oh, it looks like I got a couple of them there. So those were all in separate chunks. So I needed to move them all together and I didn't. Nice. So I'll just, I'll just quickly put it in like that. So anyway, you get the point. So the drain goes across there and in section, this is sloping down to the left and this one is sloping down to the right. And then here's my parkade slab. That is how you do a ramp to a parkade. There's my car. Um, oh, over here, here's a curb cut. Uh, if I look at my curb cut for a wheelchair in um, straight on site plan view, this pad edit boundary has a slope arrow tail and head um, whatever your curb height is midpoint to midpoint the two little triangle pieces may not be um, midpoint to point this one goes it points to this corner because I want that corner to line up with this one but the arrow tail isn't necessarily the midpoint, it needs to be that, the perpendicular point to that line. And that way, when you make sure you have that perpendicular snap show up, that's how you get a beautiful, smooth connection um, with this triangle piece to that flat piece. All right, hope that helps. That is the end of um, the parking lot stuff.